big boss that's special It ain't no game, but they say I'm welcome to the second level Hello, Internet, and welcome back, or welcome to Indie Please That Details, episode 24. My name is Keegan, one half of Level 2 Gamers, hanging out with Tom, the other half. How you doing today, Tom? I'm grand. I'm excited. Yes. So, a couple things. Housekeeping, I guess, before we jump in the episode. Housekeeping. Uh, new camera, so if things look slightly different, whether good or bad, we don't know yet. Uh, we're working <laughs> we'll on it. We'll find out in post. We'll find out. Um, but that's why. So, we're also recording the audio through there, so hopefully that'll, mm-hmm. that'll take it to one file, so less to do in post. Yeah. The computer's not plugged in here. Let me plug your computer in. Uh, and I plugged it when I, that's a good when idea. I pulled the thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, new camera, so we've got the new, we got a new setup going on, kind of. Uh, yeah, part, it's, one it's of a, part one of, of our an plan, evolution. isn't it? Yeah, we have a plan in the works. Which is this weird is to say, because we never have plans. Part one is the new camera that finally came in. We both went in on it, and it is a really, really nice camera. What did you, uh, you say when you stepped over there? You're like, there's a lot going on over here, or something like that. <laughs> there's, yeah, I mean, it's we cool. We should take a picture and put we it on will. Instagram of side-by-side Check of the two cameras. Check our Instagram. There'll be a picture of our fancy new What's camera Instagram? setup. Instagram.com slash level 2 gamers gamers STL. STL. Uh, But yeah, so we're the nice part about this is that we get to record video and audio into the same uh, like Input. unit, so to speak. So the same one card, one file, everything on it, and then uh, way easier to edit, but also good for like cons and things like that. Yes. So, so, so and uh, two SD sweet. card slots. And two SD But this card is not slots. the camera show. It's not the this camera show. This is the Indie Please That Details. It is. Do you know what Indie Please That Details is? Tell Tom? me. Indie Please, indie, please That Details <laughs> is our weekly dip in the world of indie games and indie developers, where we discuss the news and our excursions throughout the week. Topping it all off with a discussion of topic that you can join down in the comments below. Mm. Or wherever you want Twitter. Uh, You can join us on your favorite podcast services, Google Play, iCloud, Stitcher, SoundCloud. SoundCloud. I'm like, I'm missing one. I always miss one, uh, etc. Or you can see our lovely faces with the lovely new camera and hopefully prettier looking things at level2gamers.com. Level, the number two gamers.com. You can hit us up on Twitter at level2gamers, STL, or in Discord, link in the description. Also, we love you. I just wanted to throw that out. Okay. You might. Okay. I love you guys. It's real anyway. weird because the color is so different for us. I know to it's kind of neat. I like it's it. Throwing I me feel off. like I feel like more professional. Yes. You know? Like without really being just by new camera. Hopefully yeah, for them to look the same. We are not more professional, but we look we more look professional, professional, which uh, makes me happy. So let's jump into what I started last week, Tom. Do and that's it. the new releases, it, which I'm going to call Detail Point One because okay. I've yet to come up with a better name than that. Pre Detail. Nah. No, you don't like that one? Nah. I'll work on it. I'll come up with something. So, PlayStation Blog has the drop for the week of February 20th, 2018. That that's, is this week. That's this week. That is this week. The drop has Abo Kashem. Abo this Kashem. Looks great. Abo Kashem is a comedy RPG. After waking in the middle of nowhere with amnesia, you try to piece together what happened to you. With your trusty lizard companion, the two of you must uncover a massive conspiracy involving a powerful monolith. You know what I like about this? It actually looks really cool. Representation. Because this is... You're representing the lizards? Well, yes, definitely lizards, but also, like, I mean, it's uh, obviously like a Middle Eastern character that's mm-hmm. in the game, and uh, I mean, I can't think of too many games with Middle Eastern characters that aren't automatically your enemy, <laughs> so it's nice to actually be a friendly mm-hmm. Middle, Middle, Eastern Middle Eastern guy character. with a little lizard character, and actually, so that's great, that's representation, we're fans of that, keep more of that, please. Go. Uh, Armored Warfare, apparently is free to play. Mm. Armored Warfare introduces you to a dynamic modern vehicle combat Excuse me, where one shell and one split second can be all that stands between you and victory. So it sounds like another one of those free to play war games. Yeah, super generic. Yes. I'm not mad about it because it's free, but at the same time, like, come on. Deadbolt. This looks good. Deadbolt and is, is an extremely challenging stealth action hybrid that allows you to take control of the Reaper to quell the recent up de- uh, undead uprising. I'm I'm interested in this one. This one I want to spend a bit more time looking at, watching gameplay footage and stuff, because there's a couple this week, actually, that have caught my eye, but yes. that was definitely one of them. It was one of them, Defender's Quest, Valley of the Forgotten DX Edition. What's I'm DX? Assuming, I'm assuming Deluxe. Uh, That's my guess. Makes sense. Defender's Quest is a tower defense RPG hybrid that focuses on tactical depth, depth cu- customization, and story. That means no random encounters, no spiky-haired emo kids, no forced <laughs> time sinks, and no tedious, repetitive battles. That's great. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I totally, uh, just on description alone, they know what they're doing. I'd be, I'd be happy with that. Uh, I'm not going to this game just based on the picture they have here. This looks like it was done in Microsoft Paint. Oh, my God. Little yeah. Adventure on the Prairie, out digitally on PSV and PS4 to 
2022. Venture through 12 levels and destroy all monsters standing between you and the end. No. That's the description no. they put. How much is it? Does it say? It doesn't say. Job doesn't tell you. How, Metal, if it's more than a dollar, it's too much. Metal Gear Survive. That's not indie, but I had to pull it up that that's out this week. Yeah. Actually, so you're shaking your head because I know how you feel about Konami and Kojima and all that going on. Mm. But this game has actually gotten pretty good reviews. Yeah. So it's it's not bad. I had the beta and I was about to play it and its server shut off. <laughs> so like literally like right as I was about to play it, it shut off. Uh, so I never got it's a chance to reviews. play it. But I saw some gameplay and stuff and I'm just like, hey, I'm kind of like, I mean, I'm, I'm still mad. So you're still I, biased. I will. I will not buy it on principle that Hideo is my boy. And uh, fuck those guys. Past Cure, PS4. This is the other one. Digital and Retail, 223. Mm, this and it's a cinematic story driven experience that challenges the player to use mind bending mental abilities to survive. Yeah, this is the other one that I looked at and I thought, ooh. <laughs> ooh. Yeah, that's my, that's my ooh. Face. This, is, this is mine. I'm excited for this one. <laughs> Premium Pool Arena, PS4 Digital. Ooh, ooh. Awaken the Pool Pro within you. Re. In parentheses, discover the joy and tension of traditional pool through the different game modes and ultra intuitive gameplay. You like pool? Do you play pool? I did. I played at Grandma's house, so that's the only place I'd play it. Mm. So, Grandma, did you play billiards or did you play pool? It was pool. Okay. I mean, we played eight. Just or, like we played eight ball. Okay. Is what we played. Mm. So yeah, and her table is funny because you'd have like. Granted, Grandma's lived there. Well, she doesn't live there anymore because she's dead, but she lived there for however many years. Subtle. And throughout the years, you'd have just different people join the family, whether it's girlfriends, boyfriends, wives, husbands. Like, people just join your family eventually. Yeah. And whenever they played pool for the first time on Grandma's table, they'd always lose because Grandma's table had a slant. Ah. That you did not know about unless you had played on Grandma's table before. So you were you hustling see all it. these boyfriends and girlfriends. Yeah, you're like, haha, watch this. I would suck at pool, so I, I didn't bet ever win. You Ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't hit that. And it, you see the ball just go whoo and just start bending to That's the left. Funny. You're like, what is happening? This one I'm actually excited about. Rad Rogers, PS4, <laughs> digital and retail, out 221. That's my little guitar noise. Do you like that? <laughs> It's for the rad. Sounds like a dying cat. It's, it's a little bit like <laughs> it a dying cat. Sounds like a dying it's cat. It's for rad, because it's rad. There's so much 80s revival going on right now, don't you think? Rad is a rambunctious but spirited young boy who maybe plays too many video games. After dozing off at the tail end of a long night of gaming, Rad awakens to find his dusty old console has turned itself back on. Mm. I think it's every gamer's nightmare. Sentient game. So many PSVR games, Jesus. There's a, yeah, there's, uh, there's two a, of them are nights on Friday, though. Yeah. But there's, it's coming out this week. They're this week on the drop. On the drop for Don't 220. Don't be on Codename Morpheus tomorrow. Same time. Just same channel. <laughs> different <laughs> show. Not different, <laughs> not different channel. Uh, the station, PS4 Digital. How would you react if a sentient alien civilization was discovered that challenged everything you knew about biology, chemistry, physics, and religion? Not well. Uh, this reminds me a little bit of... Uh, so I've, I've watched the trailer for this, and I've watched some people play this you on PC. You were the one that told me um, to look at this. Yeah, this reminds yeah. me of... Uh, uh, fuck, what's the name? Like, um, yeah. Gone Home and Tacoma. Okay. So... It's not by Steve Gaynor, because those those games are by yeah, Fulbright. Yeah, it's but... right. Um, I will I will wait you and see. You wish it was VR. But yeah, this isn't really indie, but sort of online Fatal, Fatal Bullet, Bullet is also out this yes. week. Yes. Symmetry. Symmetry is a survival management game set in retro-futuristic, that's an oxymoron, sci-fi universe. Your main goal is to manage crash survivors and help them withstand the desolate, extremely cold environment in order to fix their spacecraft and escape. Do you know what retro future actually is? It's a future from the past. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It's yeah. like if you watch like an Aliens movie. A long, movie long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. If, yeah, if you watch like an Aliens movie and like you see the tech that they have on the ship, it's supposed to be like this super high tech like DOS computer, mm -hmm. you know? It's like that's what they thought the future was going to be. So it's like the future as imagined in the past. Yeah. It's great. I like that. Uh, this that one, time. no joke, I'm actually excited about because it's a puzzle game. Tiles, PS4 Digital. It's simple. Get from the green tile to the red tile while clearing the blue tiles in between. Consider your moves carefully, though, as you might regret them later. Oh. And do it fast because the very ground beneath you is falling. So it's just a puzzle game where the ground falls while you go along. Mm -hmm. I've been playing a lot of The Witness recently, so oh, I picked really? The Witness on sale. Yeah, that actually was going to be my spotlight a couple weeks ago, but then we had something. I did got you something ever play, else. Uh, did you ever play Braid? No. Interesting. But I was the same person. I was the same person. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Blow. Jonathan Blow yeah, is a very interesting fellow. Witness was on sale. I uh, I'm not very good at it. Yeah. 
It's hard. Jonathan Blow games are really hard. <laughs> um, Braid was really hard. Witness is really hard. He just like has a sadistic streak in him, I think. Yeah. yeah. So that's a new release on the PS4. Let's head over to the world of Xbox, which Let's some of these it. are going to be the same. Some of these are going to be different. Looks like Rad Rogers is there. Yes. So Metal Gear Survive, The Station, Tiles, Rad Rogers... Xenon Valkyrie, which is also on, on PlayStation, I forgot to mention that. Xenon Valkyrie Plus. Defender's Quest, Valley, Valley of the Forgotten DX, Sword Art Online, Fatal Bullet, Pass Cure, Ibo, Kashem, Symmetry, and the only different one is Fable Fortune. Is that based on Fables? Or is that something A else? collectible card game that combines the iconic world and characters of the Fable series with a fast-paced tactical gameplay. Choose between good and evil to alter special abilities and even trade cards in your deck. So it's like Compete Gwent in leagues and events and take a boss on with a friend with a friend in co-op mode. Whether you're you're new car new to cards or veteran, it's time to return to Didn't uh what's his name, Molyneux? Is it Peter Molyneux? Didn't he like say there would be no more Fable games at all? Why are they making a fucking card game? He didn't say there would be no but Fable. I'm pretty sure he did. You know how many times that fucker lied in well, his career? That's fair. There you go. Yeah. Shut you down quick. Yeah. <laughs> he was English. That's why I don't want to admit it. Let's move on to Nintendo Land, Nintendo Yay. World. Uh, Layers of Fear Legacy. We should do that every time we do that. No. Okay. That's why I didn't say Switch. I broke I never Switch. said Switch. Can I tell you a, a quick story before you go in here? Sure. Because it's, it's, we're, we're going to talk about the games you can't play. It's worth it, yeah. So, for you guys that don't know, I broke my Switch. So, let this be a warning and also a fun lesson to you. Um, so, I bought the Nyko portable uh, dock for the Nintendo Switch. I pre-ordered that shit because I really wanted a little dock that I could take with me whenever we went to like conventions or whatever and we could set it Is up. Is that the one I knocked off? No, different one. Nah. Uh, the same switch that you knocked yeah. off, but yeah, different, <laughs> different, different dock. dock. So, uh, so anyway, I got this this dock, and uh, it was fifty dollars. And I was gonna play some Switch upstairs the other day, so I was gonna use this dock for the first time ever. I put it on there. It stayed on the screen for three seconds, turned off, and then suddenly it like was like, no, I don't know how to charge anymore. Uh, put it on the dock downstairs. Still didn't know how to charge. Plugged it directly in from the power source. USB-C. Still didn't know how to charge. It fucked my Switch. It bricked my Switch. Which, apparently, according to Amazon, anyway, is at least like 50% of people that bought this dock fucked their Switch uh, with it. Luckily, Nintendo is awesome, and it's still under warranty, and I didn't tell them it was a third-party dock. So they are replacing it well, for now me now. right now. I'll be back by the time this episode goes live. What but is- here's the cute part, right? My uncle works in Nintendo. <laughs> Got I got a Game Boy too. Uh, so uh, here's uh, here's the fun part, and the thought that I thought you would like is that you know, like for our job, sometimes we have to read off like serial numbers, right? And serial mm-hmm. numbers suck to read off. So mm-hmm. you're you're doing military alphabet usually, like you know, Lima, a for alpha. alpha, you know, whatever. So this is how Tango. fucking cute Nintendo is. Uh, they were like, how do I spell that last name? M for Mario. <laughs> like, it's like L for Luigi. I was like, this is the best yeah. thing ever. They do their alphabet. What was with I? Nintendo character. I don't even remember. See? Like, they did normal ones, but, like, occasionally they'd throw in a Nintendo like, thing. So it was a, like I for a, Igloo. What's a, what's a Q? What's a Q? It was Mario like M game. for Mario, or I for Q Igloo, game. L for Luigi, you know, and then they like they had, like, normal ones mixed in with Nintendo ones. It was so good, and I was like, I was laughing my ass off at this guy. I felt bad for him, but I was just, like, dying Are you sure he has phone. to do it, or is he just having fun I with think it? they tell him to do it. I, I mean, he maybe he was having fun. Because let's be know. honest, some people where we work would do maybe that. Maybe he was bored, yeah. I did once. But I thought it was cute. I did my my favorite one I ever did was uh, I did D as in dad, M as in mom. <laughs> I usually have to, other phone I have to pull it. up the military alphabet because yeah, I don't, I know. don't know. I don't either. I, if I end up making it up on the spot, I say the stupidest <laughs> shit. Like, I'll be like, Q for quail. Koala. <laughs> like, just like, just Koala. random stuff. Q anyway, so if you call Nintendo customer support uh, and, you, and you're like t- spelling something for them, do that back to them because they'll love that shit. It was great. I liked it. That was my story. Sorry. Cool. On to Nintendo <laughs> Switch releases. Layers of Fear Legacy 1999. Mm, re-releasing that, eh? Uh, well, it never released on Switch. So this is going to have all of it with the DLC and all that. ACA Neo Geo Magical Drop 3. I'm guessing this is just looks like a collection of a bunch of Neo Geo games. Mm. Uh, Ace of Seafood is pre-purchase. It doesn't say when it actually comes out. It says available 20 seconds. Ace so I'm of guessing Seafood is legendary. It's 12 bucks on Nintendo Switch. Get it. I'm going to get it again. Dragon Sinker. Oh, uh, this. Thirteen, thirteen dollars. Uh, membrane, nine dollars or ten dollars. Pac-Man Champion Edition Two Plus. Twenty bucks for a Pac-Man game. 
But it's cha Champion Edition. It has, like, a bunch of them. Was it made in fucking Unreal 4 with, yeah. like, 60 yes. frames per second? Like, here you go. Here's, I don't here's, care. Here's, here's one for you. All right. Radiation Island. Ten bucks. Don't know anything about it. I don't either. Looks good, though. Space Cats with lasers. Five bucks. Right up there with Ace of Seafood. Super Superola and the Lost Burgers. Six. But fucking Nintendo with, with these. I love this. I mean, these are not Nintendo-made games. These are third-party games. Oh, I see Nintendo. one on the bottom right there that I'm super excited about. Yeah, that's not this week, though. That's uh, next week. Well, we'll, tell, we'll say it. Typo. Minute. No. we got to hold it for wait? next week. Yeah. Gotta make you wait? can't. You got to make them wait, Tom. Right. Typo Man. 1039. I have this Switch. for PS4 because it looked really interesting. And then Final Station coming out. 20 bucks. I couldn't get into that. And... Toki Tori 2 plus Nintendo Switch Edition, 10 bucks, and Twin Robots Ultimate Edition, 649 coming out. Yeah, there's a couple games next week that are interesting, but we're not going to talk about them yet because they're not here yet, Tom. Nope. Nope. <laughs> okay, all right. Nope. It's one of my favorites. Such so new releases this week. Cool. On Xbox, PS4, and Nintendo Switch. Lots if of you cool had games. to pick one for each, each area to buy, what would you get? Well, I don't have a Switch, but I would definitely if choose the su Superola and the Lost Burgers just to see what it's about. <laughs> exactly. Let's be honest. Ace of Seafood, definitely for yeah. me, because that's that's legendary. Uh, PlayStation, I have to pull back up because I forgot. The I, oh, the uh, the uh, Abo, uh, Abo Kashem. Kashem I think I'd there. go for that. And then Red Rogers, I'd get on Xbox. Uh, yeah, I think Red Rogers for Xbox, and then that uh, that other. The the second one I said I would like I forget what it's, it's whatever <laughs> that other one that other one we talked about yeah that other one so let's move in to the Detail details and the meat numero uno. of this detail number one THQ Nordic acquires Deep Silver meaning Saints Row is back at THQ so I have to tell a story first go for it so THQ mm. which I don't know what THQ stands for I was gonna say stands for but I didn't I realized halfway through that thought I didn't know what THQ <laughs> no, stands for no, I don't know for. Um, THQ went out of business T is for Tom. <laughs> H is for Harry. Q is for Queen. I don't know. Tom, Harry, Queen. Um, THQ went out of business. They were bankrupt a few years ago. Sad days. THQ Nordic. During E3 as well. Remember that? It I was, don't remember. It, they quietly put out the press release no, in the middle of E3. Like, oh, by the way, we're, we're going gone. out of business. But T so THQ Nordic is a was a different company that mm. bought the name to THQ. Mm. So it's not... THQ from back in the day, it's new guys with the neat THQ. Not the name. guys that used to make the wrestling games. Yes. Different one. But now they're buying THQ back in the day's property, so THQ is becoming THQ again. Which is awesome. Which is awesome. So, let's read this. This is from Polygon here. THQ Nordic announced that it has acquired Coke Media or Cock Media or Coach Media, depending on how you say it. C O K C H. Or Chaos. Coke. K yeah. I'm assuming like it's the Coke. Coke Brothers. Yeah. The parent company of video game pub publisher Deep Silver in a deal worth $149 million. It's not bad. As part of the acquisition, THQ Nordic, formerly known as Nordic Games, is now the owner of the game series Saints Row, Homefront, Dead Island, Metro, and more. <sighs> in other words, the new THQ now owns the brands that old THQ sold off after it filed bankruptcy in 2012. A quick refresher of how we got here. This is what I just said. Publisher THQ filed bankruptcy in December 2012. You lied. It wasn't around E3. I swear it was during E3 they announced it. Unless E3 it. was in December. Well, no, they announced it. And it auctions they... off its studios and multiple intellectual property to multiple companies in early 2013. Yeah. So. They announced it during E3. They maybe didn't actually Coke go Media, bankrupt until later. Which owns Deep Silver Publishing Label, purchases St. Row developer Volition and Metro Property at the auction. Crytek offers to buy... Buy Homefront property and later sells it to Coke Media. Nordic Games buys up a su substantial amount of Who THQ's property, including Darksiders, Red Faction, and the MX series. Nordic Games later acquires THQ, THQ trademark and changes name to THQ Nordic. THQ Nordic buys Coke Media publishing and film business, bringing a number of previous previously published games by THQ back to the label. So that's exciting. That's right. Um, it's, a, it's a nice little circle of life. I'm excited to see, because let's be honest, Saints Row. Of a lot of those games are probably the the, the most popular, probably most well known. You know, like I feel like it was going stale, but yeah, it, I mean they could definitely do some stuff with it. They definitely were running out of ideas. Yeah. Uh, by the end of its lifespan, they, now. I think of, I'm more excited licenses. for Dead Island. Yeah, uh, but you are. But the general mass is no. Well, I'm just saying, more. like, because when because when Deep Silver split up into the two factions that they had, Dying Light came out, which was obviously really really good. But they were working on Dead Island too. Like Dead Island two looked really kind of interesting. Yeah, but it's probably dead now. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, well, no, it might not be. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, they, they definitely had an interesting thing going there. The other one, um, there was another, oh, Metro, which is interesting, because I thought Metro uh, had a new game coming out pretty soon, didn't they? Didn't they have, like, an open-world Metro? They just had one come out on a 
Yeah, they announced one at E3. Yeah. So, like, what's going on with that company then? I assume they're going to just continue that just game. Just a parent company, and they're just going to yeah, keep working on just it. Yeah, keep working on it. Because the developer maybe, went with them. I felt like Xbox might snipe them, actually. That's interesting. No. Nope. That THQ Nordic. THQ Nordic. Got them. THQ Nordic has been all right lately. Like, they did, didn't they do, like, Conan Exiles and a bunch yeah, of stuff? Yeah, THQ Nordic has done a lot of, like, they're, it's funny because they they're, they are the double A developer now in, in the world. Yeah. Um, obviously, St. Trail, I'd consider potentially triple A. Experience. I think they got to AAA. Um, but, yeah, they, they're they known back in the day for being, like, that in-between mm -hmm. indie and big ones, which you don't have very many of those anymore, no. the AA standard, where it's, like, that. it's good, but it's not quite the, the... It's not indie, but it's not trip. Yeah, it's really... It's it's a weird gray area in between the two. Hmm. Uh, moving on. Once upon a coma Kickstarter has been launched from the creators of Pinstripe, which will be our spotlight this week. Mm -hmm. So, two things I want to bring up about this. One, Jack Septiguy is the main character. Interesting. So, he's in the game. Two, uh, they have already hit their goal. <laughs> oh. Within, well, when I when I saw this, this had just started. It's now a couple days old. But they hit their goal within two days. Wow. So, let me read you. And, and like, for real, Jacksepticeye is the main character? Or he just looks like Jacksepticeye? It's based on Jacksepticeye. Jacksepticeye was in Pinstripe. PewDiePie was in Pinstripe as well. Why? Voices. Oh. So, okay. long story short, Thomas Brush... And we'll get into it. Thomas Brush, who made this game, mm. one man show, uh, is fans with the Game Grumps. Game okay. Grumps are fans with PewDiePie and with Jacksepticeye and Markiplier and all these. So they that's kind of how that came about. I'm guessing. Okay. I don't know for sure, um, but that's that's the that's the thing I'm going with. So sure. the voice is going to be Jacksepticeye. No, the character design is based on Jacksepticeye. Interesting. Yep. Okay. So here we go. Hi there, my name is Thomas Brush, and I've been making games since I was a teenager because of Kickstarter and the emotionally story of an ex-minister's journey through hell called Pinstripe was released to glowing praise in 2016 from Steam. The Washington Post and Time Magazine... That's a weird sentence. After five years of soul development, I couldn't be prouder of what was put together or released. This is this this is a weird setup. I'm doing so, some maintenance I'm, while you're... Well, I'm trying to figure out how, where he your talks lines about it. Well, no, I'm trying to figure out how he... Okay, I'm just gonna go with this. So this is this is this is the new this is the new game. Okay. After Pete wakes up from a strange coma, he discovers things aren't exactly as he remembers. Pete Septicai. His hometown is overrun by naughty chickens, and grown-ups have all vanished. Pete quickly learns of massive insects, child-eating zombie parents, otherworldly and and otherworldly puzzles. An intricate maze like forts woven together throughout the large late summer dreamscape. The same forts Pete and his gang built years earlier are suddenly larger, stranger, and more dangerous than ever. With the help of your childhood pals, your pet bird, and your father's trusty razor blade, it's up to you to discover the secrets secrets of your missing sister in the bizarre world around you. To do this, you must learn various pieces of music written by your sister scatter, scattered across the world. Hmm. Play them on your old piano to unlock secret passages, clues, and new abilities to tra for traversal across the increas increasingly threatening landscape. Leave the safety of your hometown, Reddington, and fight your way through the insect-ridden childhood forts like the Spiderian Well, Blood Wick Hollow, Ashcliff, Fluff Bucket Deep, and Black Fort Hospital. Fluff Bucket sounds like a euphemism for something. Yes. Engage your childhood pals in make-believe side quests like finding your best friend's Best friend Preston's homemade coma cards, a fun little game revealing secrets about the world, creatures, bosses, and characters, rumored to be to give you magical abilities. So, the art style on this is very much like Pinstripe, and I found this while looking up stuff for Pinstripe, and I'm super excited about this. I don't know if it's coming to Xbox, don't know if it's coming to PS4, but what happened with Pinstripe is it came to Steam. PC, Steam first, and then literally this week, or last week, I guess, technically. Um, last week it came out on consoles and it was really well done if this is anything like that with the emotion i watched there's a demo of it out i think if you back it you get a demo but there's a there's a demo of it that's been floating around the internet and it's scarier than pinstripes Pin, pinstripe had spooky moments but it was not a spooky game if that mm. makes sense like there's a lot of who are you type things versus this there's a lot of beasties and it creatures looks, uh, a little bit like a tim burton yes inspired and that's what pinstripe symbol thing. is it, yeah. look, it actually looks like welcome to the black parade from the still mm. images on there it looks like my chemical my chemical I, I mean i would play it for cool sure the story sounds super interesting the monsters sound cool it does i like the uh the zelda ocarina of time twist of having to find the songs and play the songs on a piano and stuff i think uh yeah, I'm uh, totally on board for that. Um, 
I uh, I dig it. So if you want to back it, it, it's up now, up for another twenty plus days. Definitely getting made. Um, so that's it's already, good. It's already it's already yeah. funded. It's yeah. This the, the I think part of this was funded based on the success that happened with Pinstripe. Oh. My only concern with this, uh, looking at what I've seen of the game so far, is that this is going to be too similar similar to Pinstripe in look and feel. But there are enough difference. There are a few differences, so I can't say for sure because I've not played it firsthand. Is but, he doing the whole thing himself again this time? I think so. Wow. Yeah. So he did. He did all the work on Pinstripe, except for some voice work. <coughs> Excuse me. So detail numero tres. Human fall flat sells two million copies across all platforms. New costumes coming to PC. Mm, you like this one, didn't you? Human fall flat is fun because it's a physics, stupid mm. physics thing. Human fall flat. A purposely hard-to-control physics puzzle-based game was released by one-man developer No Break Games back in July in 2016. While I was not too fond of the game at launch, it has steadily grown its fan base since since then, especially on YouTube and Twitch, and has been released on PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo it's Switch. It's worth pointing out that you're reading from Dual Shockers, and yes. Thomas Francis is the one that yes. wasn't a fan of it. Keegan actually really liked it. Yeah. I liked it in moments. No, you like yeah. it. It was frustrating at times. Today, to be. No Breaks game, No Break Games revealed the title has surpassed 2 million copies sold since launch, an impressive feat for an indie game made by one man. According to the game's developer, Human Fall Flat was one of the most played games on Steam in 2017 and has done well on consoles all the consoles has been ported to. To celebrate these numbers, the game's price is, was half off. I don't know if it still is, uh, because it's a couple days old. Uh, and we'll be re- receiving two new skins. Steam will be receiving two new skins based on Dog and Kaysen, who is the god of wealth in China. So it's you're the dog things. I, uh, I'm, I wonder how much of that slice of the pie was Switch, specifically. Because I think we they always would have talk- said it. I think majority of it's Steam. You think so? Majority of I was going to say, because like they said it did well on console, but I'm like, every indie game so far that's released for, for Nintendo has done better on Nintendo than everything else. I think, it is, so. I think Switch is probably the best console, but I think I would say probably three-fourths, if not more, is from Steam. Fair enough. Because this was this game was this everywhere. This is for hugely uh, it's an internet based streamers. One. Well, it's, yeah. it's kind of like the PUBG mentality. Right. I, just obviously a smaller base, but it just wants streamers and let's players saw it or played it and then people are like, ooh, and then just kind of the power of there. streamers and uh indie media. It's crazy. Developers. Developers. Give us more keys. <laughs> this next one's for you. Detail number four. Aw. New summer update on PS4 adds a safe mode. Safe mode? Yes. It's well, a safe like word. you can't die? Quite some time ago, Frictional Games promised to bring an update to its sci-fi horror title, Soma, that would add a safe mode. The update has finally arrived, and you can download the patch now. Safe mode removes all enemy encounters, which many found to be out of place in in Soma's narrative-driven experience. This allows you to play the game in relative peace, soaking in the atmosphere and the story without the threat of sudden enemy attacks. Will you be playing Soma in safe mode? No. You played Soma when it launched. That sounds like it takes out the fun of the game to me. That's not true. Somebody like me, who would like the atmosphere but not the jump scares? Because yeah, I'm cool with You that. asked me, not yourself. No, I asked. I, I, I was reading, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were just, like, no. generally asking me. No, I, I think no. that... I It's fine, fine, obviously. It's an option, isn't it, for people that want to... Because Soma's atmosphere is wonderful. And people that dig underwater stuff... I mean, the thing is, though, most people that dig underwater stuff dig it because they like the beasties. They like the scary parts of the underwater games. Like, that's why people are fascinated with the deep, dark ocean. It's because they like the, the fear aspect of it. But, um... It's not like, it's not like pretty, it's not a pretty game by any means. It's like dirty, dark, horrible ocean, scary submarines that are rusted. Like it's, you know, it's intense. Um, I didn't get very far in it, admittedly, because uh, of the enemies. <laughs> but um, that doesn't mean but I want them removed. I don't want them removed. I, you know, the puzzles were fine. But yeah, no, I think, I, I personally, that does nothing for me. But I'm. it's cool that they actually updated a game that's been out for, what, two years now? 2016? Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. At least they're supporting it still. That was back when we sat over there to record. They videos. should just make Soma two, but you know, whatever. Maybe it's more expensive to make Soma two. It's definitely more expensive <laughs> to make Soma two than you just press enemies delete. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. Wow. Well, we'll ask our developer friends. Can know. you hit enemies delete? Nope. Cool. I bet you can. No. Uh, but it's then definitely you have to way make... more complicated than that. It so? is way more complicated. Developers, you, watching if the you, show. Because if you remove one source piece of code, it could affect another piece of code. Yeah, I guess. So. Detail number five, 400-player Battle Royale. 
Mavericks, Proving Ground, Teaser Taylor, Teaser Trailer, Teaser Taylor, Teaser Taylor, Teaser Taylor, Soldier Spy, Revealed. And this is from Dual Shockers as well. Mavericks, Proving Grounds may be the latest in trends of upcoming Battle Royale games that are tempting to seize on the, the moment we're in. Public or public player on no battlegrounds players are looking for something more whether it's higher fidelity graphics or higher player count developer ottoman 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 tomato <laughs> ottoman games is seeking to capitalize on the genre of success with a project that is abund abundant in ambition the games trailer trailer recently released and you can There's, see it behind us yes while it does not include any gameplay, only the silhouette of a player running through a forest, the trailer does give us a taste of what is to come in terms of the game's graphical goal. There is only footage of the forest in a field using god rays, detailed foliage, and the echoes of gunfire and explosions can help the viewer imagine just what the game could look like. It is important, however, or to note, however, that until we see some in-game footage, there's no telling how this game will turn out. A couple things that have set me about this. Hold on, let me finish. Mavericks Proving Ground is set to release in 2018, according to their website, and is reaching for more than graphical goals as developers are planning to include up to 400 players in a match. That could mean that players who are only who are looking for longer match times in PUBG, who recent which recently got a balancing patch on Xbox One and a shorter match than Fortnite, how is it shorter than Fortnite could get their wish? I feel like the short, yeah, For, Fortnite's, Fortnite's twenty short. minutes. Yeah. So no, that's not so. going to be shorter than Fortnite. What's what I, I Unless interrupted you can choose you. the you amount say? of people you want to fight against. Yeah, what'd you say? So here's here's the problems that I have with it. Okay, number one, it's what is for oh, what not Fortnite? What is uh, PUBG's major oh. problem? Lag. Stabilization. Yeah. Right? You're gonna now go from a hundred to four hundred, so four times the amount of players, mm -hmm. and you're gonna up the graphical fidelity of everything with god rays and what if you it's know, smaller? All that. But well, it's not gonna be as fun anyway, is it? Who knows? Could be. I don't think so. If you put 400 people in a smaller map than PUBG, because you'd have to make a bigger map in my eyes. If you make the same size map as PUBG and there's four, I mean, you're lucky to stay alive past 30 seconds in PUBG with, the with where everyone lands. Like, if you land someplace that no one else lands, that's your only shot at trying to win this game, right? So with 400, it's four times as likely that someone's going to land in the same spot that you are if they keep the map exactly the same size and then you have to maintain that against balancing and lagging and different players like uh you know various pings and things like that like to avoid cheating in game uh, which PUBG has had over a million people banned for cheating right so on PC. yeah i i don't see realistically on this console generation's hardware i don't or PC hardware even, the way it is right now, I don't see them making this work. But, I mean, I I will happily eat my words if they pull it off and it's a good game. But I just think, like, right now... It's a headline-grabbing thing. Kind of yeah, they've kind of proven that this is already really fucking hard to do. And admittedly, the PUBG team is small, but now they have, like, Xbox behind them, and they're still having problems. So, yeah, I think that's a little bit of, like, your... your, uh, your Bark your is going to be fame. way, way better you than your, your bite. Minute, yeah. 15 minutes of fame. Yeah. Detail number six, and last one for the week. I thought this was kind of exciting. Do it, do it. Mods are coming to your town in City Skylines on Xbox One Edition. Mm. Cool. This is from the official Xbox Wire. Hello once again. Oh, I should say, this is coming from Sandra N Nerdinger, project manager of City Skylines for That's Xbox One Edition. last name, isn't it? Nerdinger, 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 Nerdinger. Hello, once again, mayors. We hope you've had a fun time building cities and infusing them with your own mixture of sensibility and style. Our favorite thing about working with City Skylines Xbox One Edition is getting to see the creative ways that our players bring their towns together, and we've enjoyed seeing what you've sh what you've shared. Still, we've all suspected that there was something missing from the game, and we think we finally got it. F we figured out the problem. Why aren't we letting? Players add statues of hamsters the size of the space needle. <laughs> I agree with that statement. I do not disagree with that Fair statement point. at all. Fair point. Uh, Solid. Starting February 20th, we're finally adding the feature to the game and several more, more that our players have created. I feel like I missed a line somewhere. Nope. Okay, cool. <laughs> it just jumps right in. 
Starting February 20th, we're, we're finally adding that feature to the game and several more that our players have created for City Skylines Xbox One Edition. We're proud to announce the arrival of user-created mods to our favorite city-building game, available this week as free content for all players. If you're if you're ever wanted to give your if you ever wanted to give your community a fancy clock tower, or put in some swimming pools, or even turn planes at your local airport into future spaceships, your fellow cities fans have been hard at work to let you do just that. Paradox has always been very proud of, to support modders across all games and the creative, fun-loving community that, that's grown a, around a, with us around City Skylines has shared some incredible ideas with us. We're hoping to share these contributions with our players on the Xbox One on the Xbox One since launch, and thanks to the hard work from Tantulus and the great support, who's the Tantulus is the one who did the port of Cities to Xbox, because Paradox is the PC developer. Uh, and the great support from Xbox team, we've got a selection of mods that have been curated, tested, and ready to drop right into your cities, all free of charge with a new update. This is our first venture into mods for any Xbox title, and it's something we've been waiting to try for a while now. We're very eager to hear what you think about these initial mods, and if it seems like we're on the right track, please let us know. We'd love to see about keeping this content growing. In addition to the community content, we've also got a content pack coming soon as part of the ongoing season pass. Coming soon to Xbox One is the Creator Content Pack, a series of buildings created by City Skyline's most talented community artists and modelers. The pack will allow you to add some art deco flair and technological triumphs to your town and will be release, will also be releasing free content that lets your city host its own, very own sports team. Look for that on Mark 6. That's kind of neat. Have a look at the new content waiting for you tomorrow in City Skylines Xbox One Edition. Let us know what else you'd like to see. Hmm. So, I'm excited about this because one of the things I keep saying, <clears throat> the reason I play, there's two reasons I play cities on PC. Control scheme, I think, is better than a controller because just the type of game it is. And mods. Like, I had a town one time that Main Street was most tavern. Bob's Burgers restaurant, like seven of those, because <laughs> you can't control what building goes where. Um, I had the Drunken Clam. I had uh, the Simpsons houses. I had uh, um, the the Warner Brothers Water Tower. Like, Could they add that to the Xbox One though? Because the Xbox surely is more highly policed than PC when it comes that's, to mods. Yeah, but the, I'm just happy there's going to be mods. Right. That's where I'm at on this point. Is are you worried about it? unstabilizing the game? No, because they're testing them. So it's a curated selection okay. of them. So the way I look at this is I still think PC is the best way to play this game, hands down, because the modding community is so big. And the, the same thing I kind of feel like... Plus you don't have to have dexterity to play yeah. it. You know what I mean? Um, but this, to me, is good for people who don't have a gaming PC or have this game already on console. Well, Xbox specifically, because PlayStation will never do this because they're stupid. They did um, it for uh, Skyrim. There's, yeah, look, there's Skyrim mods for the remaster it. edition. I'm just saying. That's it. Don't shit on them. You know, but yeah, no, I'm going to shit on them because <laughs> Xbox is doing so much more for that community than right. than PlayStation. Um, but this is, I look at this like people who already have it on Xbox getting something extra mm. versus trying because you're not trying to bring people over from PC. You're trying to give people more stuff, and then they got that pack that you're going to pay for. Yeah. So I'm not mad about it. I mean, I hope that it doesn't destabilize things. I remember the mods on uh, Skyrim actually were like to issues. me were horrible just because like, crashed my game three times. That's yeah. why I stopped playing Skyrim. And it was super frustrating. It got to the it got unplayable, but I just think that's because consoles probably have a harder time um, dealing with code manipulation at the level of a mod. But uh, you know, in terms of a game like this, it's a little bit more laid back, a little bit slower, easier to play. Then um, it's cool and it's uh, it's free, so that's always good. The fact it's curated free is always good. good. Yeah, I'm sending this over by the way because I forgot to send this over here because <laughs> I need this for our spotlight. Ah, is. Pinstripe this week, and I'm gonna I pull up my pinstripe review here. I'm gonna read my review word for word, oh. and then we'll go from there. Okay. Pinstripe is an emotionally charged adventure game about hell created by one a one man team over the course of five years. Play as Teddy, the estranged ex minister, forced to venture through the frozen afterlife in search of Bo, his three year old daughter, and confront her kidnapper. Discover the dark secrets of Teddy's past and confront his sleazy demonic nemesis, Mr. Pinstripe. The story. The story of Pinstripe starts with you on a train with your daughter, Bo. As she su suggests you start playing invest start playing investigator with her. With you, her father, Ted. Sorry. I'm going to start that again. The story of Pinstripe starts with you on the train with your daughter, Bo. As she suggests 
You play investigator. She plays investigator with you, her father Ted. While on the train, you run into a shadowy figure named Mr. Pinstripe, who kidnaps Bo and will soon make or will make her soon call him quote unquote father. Dick. That was creepy. After Bo is kidnapped by Pinstripe and the train crashes into a town, Ted goes off to find Bo. Throughout the adventures, you find other people and creatures, including Ted's dog George, which I love. His name is George. Uh, I like Bo dogs calls him with George, human names. Jo- Bo, uh, Bo calls him Giorgio. Uh, who will help you find clues and discover the whereabouts of Bo. The gameplay. Pinstripe is at its heart a platformer with puzzles thrown in. The platform controls are solid and never got in the way of reaching the destination you, ever, you wanted to, nor was there ever an area you thought you could go but couldn't. The puzzles, for the most part, were straightforward if they're on the same, if they're in the same screen or same room. I a few times found myself trying to solve the bigger picker, picture puzzle. It's a... <laughs> Peter Piper picked a pair of pickle peppers. And confused on what to do and where to go. The game the game doesn't hold your hand, nor is there really a tutorial, which for the most part you don't need. It would have been nice to have clues or hints on where to go inside the game world. I found myself trekking through the same areas over and over again just to make sure I didn't miss anything or didn't trigger some sort of event. At first, this wasn't bad, but once you got further into the game and unlocked more area, areas, backtracking seemed like a chore. Armed with only a slingshot, once you find it, you can take out any enemy or puzzle with ease. There were a few times that I found myself aiming aiming the slingshot and found it cumbersome, but as the time went on, I had less and less issues with hitting my target. Also, Pinstripe has a dialogue tree, kind of. Given usually two options in a situation, either do something nice or ignore the person, which I want to go back and ignore everybody and see like what life, happens. like life, really. Uh, in my playthrough, I played nice, all, the nice guy all the way through, and I'm interested to see how the game would change, if at all, later, later based on the decisions I made. Sound design. Sound in this game was where the game probably stood out the most for me. Whether it was the background music that would shift when I go to an area of danger or unfamiliarity to a voiceover for every character you meet, while while not the best I've heard, it did very well or was done very well. Jack Septicai was in there, PewDiePie was in there. That was weird hearing their voices. Uh, there's also a farty character, good old Mr. Mr. Dick, Farty. Mr. Dickens, I think is his name. Mr. Dix? Maybe Mr. Dix. I can't remember. Each character you meet along the way have their own look and feel. When you run back into to someone down the road, you immediately feel the vibe you had from them. Overall, I enjoyed my time in Pinstripe and recommend it to anyone who is a fan of story-driven puzzle platformers. The fact that one man made the whole thing, Sans doing some voiceover work, is very impressive. The characters are well-designed, and I was determined from the beginning to save Bo from Pinstripe. Pinstripe is available on PS4, Xbox One, Steam for $15. You know, my favorite thing about that review is what? The, the fact that you use the word Sans. I was proud of you for that one. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> I can English every so often. Uh, no, you know, it was, uh, it's good use of English there. I was yeah. proud of you for that one. Um, yeah, so good time? Yes, I enjoyed it. So the the, the break that down into like bite-sized chunks here, the the gameplay was a lot of fun. I'm a, I'm a puzzle platform guy. I'm gonna, if you watch any short or any the show for any amount of time, you know that. Um, but immediately after I finished playing this, I texted you and said you would like this game because of the story. Hmm. Partially it's English, and partially it's kind of scary. But not, like I said earlier, it's not the, when I was talking about uh, Once Upon a Coma, it's not scary for the intent to scare you. It's just an eerie vibe going atmosphere. around. Yeah. Uh, from the moment you meet Mr. I mean, it Pinstripe. It is about child kidnapping, so well, it's a good base level I for don't wanna creepy. I don't want to talk about the end of the story because there's a, there's a big spoiler, <laughs> but you do want to get to the end of the story because there's a this is a really, really interesting story um, that I did not see coming. Okay with the way they, they presented it. Um, I knew something was up, and you know something's up, but at the end of it, I because in my brain, the way I, the way I approached this game was well, kind of like a cartoon. You have the big bad that did the thing, and you got to go save somebody. like mm. Kind of like Mario, like you're Mr. Pinstripe is Bowser. You're going to go defeat Mr. Pinstripe, get your daughter back, everybody's happy. That's not how this game works. There's actually a few ways that this game ends, and some of them are very heartbreaking. Are um, they based upon the dialogue trees? The they are based on your decisions. So not just dialogue specifically, some of the things you do or do not do. So you do get to make multiple optional decisions yes. during the game. I don't know how many there are, um, but I, I've are read... Are you aware that you're making an important decision? No. Ah. Nope. Okay. Um, so one of the one of the endings I found out because when I was done, I went back to see if there was anything I'd missed uh, via YouTube and other reviews. And one of the things I found out was uh, one of the one of the Again, I don't know how to word this without giving too much away. But one of the, the things I found, depending on what I did with it, would 
make one thing happen, which is what happened on mine, or if something else happened, another thing would happen. Some of them are really close. Like there's one where, like the dog. I'll give this one away. The dog you can you have with you, and based on what you do with the dog, and I'm not going to say what the event is because that's that's a spoiler. But based on what you do with the dog, will determine an outcome near the very end of the game, hmm. and. I will tell you off air what that decision is if you want me to, but the people here probably shouldn't hear it because they might cry. Um, always save the dog if you have an option. That's, that, I don't even want to know what it is. Yeah, don't tell them what it is, but if you have an option, <laughs> save the dog. Or, judging by Keegan's face, try to save the dog. <laughs> God damn it, Keegan. <laughs> you don't have to kill the dog. Okay, good. Save the dog. Always. Oh, do you, you know, there's a um, there's a website. It's called Save- when, does, when Does the Dog Die? Mm-hmm. And uh, or like no, it's not. When is the dog? It's like does the does the dog die? Mm-hmm. And it basically like in, for people that like hate when dogs die in movies, like you could look up the movie and see if there's a dog that dies in the movie. If there's not, you could be like, oh, cool, yellow, I can watch, watch this it. movie. Yeah, old yellow, you're fucked. But like yeah, like uh, Kickboxer had a dog that died mm-hmm. in it. Uh, the, John uh, Wick, obviously. The one thing I didn't talk about in my review that I wanted to, and you mentioned a little bit earlier with Once Upon a Coma, but the the art style is mm. so cool. Unique. Um, it reminds me of Tim Burton-esque. A um, lot of lanky characters, like stick figure Spindly. style yeah, characters. Mm. Um, lots of wiggly arms going around. But like, the... I, the voice acting that like I said was was good but not great. There was times where I was like, "This is wonderful." There's I guess that's what like, happens mm. when you hire YouTubers to do your voice acting. Well, it just it felt like it felt weird. The character decisions that had, and again, somebody who knows some of the YouTubers that had those voices, mm. like they didn't quite match up. Did they like have their typical YouTube voice, or did they try and put on like an actual character voice? Like, was it like it was both. top of the morning? No, <laughs> no, it was both. So, so. so. <laughs> Jack Septiguy's uh, character is one you meet later on up in up in a hill, and he just he talks to you like a, a normal person, mm. um, and like he has he you can tell he's putting on on a voice, but it's not that far from his voice. It's not his excitable voice. It's right. hey, I'm, like I'm mature. We're gonna talk about key yeah. Irish accent. It's it's it's, it's right. if Jack was talking to you in real life and not in front of a camera gotcha. voice um, versus like PewDiePie. The way you find PewDiePie is hanging upside down on a tree with his legs. St- <laughs> Uh, stuck. You gotta save him. So you gotta jump on the branch. I'd probably Fun tip. There, you, well, you can't progress the game unless you do. Fun tip: when you get to PewDiePie, jump on the branch. I couldn't. I couldn't solve that one for the longest time. That one took me probably like 15 minutes to figure. Like, because you can jump on it, and I saw it move. And I was like, oh, whatever. Maybe I'm supposed to spring somewhere. But you apparently have to jump multiple times, and he falls off, and then that starts a sequence of events. That was my big complaint with this game, is. The sequence of events was not very logical with how it happened or what you're supposed the to puzzle do. Puzzle solving? Yes. But the big puzzle solving, the little puzzle solving was easy. It's like on the screen, there's a thing. Nine times out of ten, you had to shoot another thing to make that thing do a thing to do something else. That makes make sense. Make the thing do a thing? Yeah. Gotcha. So it all depends on what, what room you're in. But the big puzzle solving, I could be... So the way the, the game works is it's a, sci- it's a screen scroller, so you mm. go from one screen to the next to the next. And I could be on the far right screen, need something far left screen, but nothing tells me to go to the far left screen. I just got to kind of wander and see what I miss. So there's no hints. Well, so one of the hints I... There are hints, but not where to go. Okay. There's hints of what to do. Okay. So one of the one of the things, there's a cave you got to go into at one point, and this old lady goes, hey, I think you need a flashlight. And it's like, no shit, I need a flashlight. And... Because <laughs> every time you go... Keegan yelling at old ladies well, since every, 1992. Every time you go... 91. Every time Plus. since every time you go up to the uh, this cave beforehand, it says, hey, it's too dark, you can't go in. Right. Type thing. So you knew you needed a flashlight. And what what was really cool, and where the dog comes in, is dog helps you find clues, and some of the clues help you solve some of the puzzles. But the flashlight lady said, hey, we need a flashlight. No mention of where it is. Um, I found some clues that kind of helped down the road, but those clues I kind of just because I was so walking you get through stumbled upon. Hint, but yeah, not but it was like, not. Yeah, it was not well, enough. I mean, would it be too easy if they just said, "Oh, you need a flashlight from the tavern three well, I don't want places that. back"? I don't want that, but I want her to be like, because I was in a, I was in a different area at that point. Be like, "Hey, do you do you remember so and so, or have you, or something something like that?" Where it's like, you just, whether it's a callback or something to give you a hint at a hint, right? If that makes sense. Not really, but I'm with you. So it's one it's one of those things where where like if I'm on I'm gonna say the far right screen in a whole different area and I've gotta go all the way back to the left, but the dude that was all the way at the left is still with me. Why do I have to go back to his house? Like the dude should have said something, Oh, I'm I have one back in my house or I, I think I have one somewhere right. stored around here, so you at least know go back that direction okay. and maybe it'll be there. I'm with you. Something along those lines. But overall I enjoyed it. Fifteen bucks. Um That's good. Good yeah, price. I really, really liked it. Um, how long? 
I would say probably f- four or five hours with all said and done. Yes. Um, depending on how good you are at puzzles. I got stuck a few times. I um, was like, oh, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, but the, the fact that this was made by one dude. Like, one man video games are always my favorite because it's impressive. I mean, yeah. any video game is impressive. But it took him five years. And it was one of those games... And you know, they probably don't know, but when we record games for the show, there's games where you're like, you record it to get, you're getting through it, and there's other games you're recording and you're hooked. This game was one of those ones where I was like, because I always set a timer for like half an hour, 45 minutes to get footage, to get an understanding, because I got other things I got to do. And I, I, the timer went off and I was like, nope, we're going to continue going. And I, I played, I think, for about an hour and a half, two hours before hmm. I called it quits the first time to go do some other stuff and came back to it. But yeah, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this game. And I recommend anybody who's a fan of either, it's, pl- it's a platformer first with puzzle elements, but puzzles aren't too bad except for the big picture puzzles are kind of tricky or if you really like a sick and twisted story mm. so. sick and twisted is the way to go yeah i'm down let's do so, it pinstripe pinstripe like 15 bucks 15 bucks now Pick on, it up. Most on things. ps4 pc and xbox not on switch cool. it'll it'll get there um, it'll get there. i don't know it'll we'll get see there. so the question i have and this was based on detail number six if <clears> you, which you remember if you city remember skylines was mods coming to city skylines good recall have mods on consoles been a success? So you mentioned uh, Skyrim mm. has mods. Fallout 4 has mods. City Skylines has mods. Does Fallout 4 have mods on PlayStation? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Didn't even know that. Yeah. That was one that came later. They tried to do I had to say no. Because <laughs> I didn't even know that those existed. No, I think... Because um, that was such a big thing, but like... It was a huge Six thing. to eight months ago. I don't think it has been... I don't think it's made the impact it could have done. Do you... Wh- why do you think that is? Because with the PC community, those guys, for a start, there's so many. There's so many to choose from, which is a good and a bad thing because it's good that you have like a large selection, but also you have to remember that you, you have to wade through a lot of crap. You're to hoping find that the, good the people ones, who are right? curating them put yeah, the good ones and up top. it doesn't like break your game because for a lot of people, you know, they put a lot of hours into these games, and if they suddenly install this mod that just kind of like fucking makes their game unplayable, then that's a bad thing. Um, I I love that they tried. I'll mm-hmm. say that I love, especially for a Skyrim. I love that they were like, you know what, like. PC gamers get this kind of extra experience over all of you guys with consoles, and we'd love for you to at least have a go at it. So I love that they tried. I just don't think it's stuck. For yeah. me, it was like I ended up turning them off because it was breaking the game. And mm-hmm. like I maybe would keep like one that made things a little bit fancier. And, you know, we, we both, uh, Dave, um, who helps us with the channel, Stream Team Dave, uh, Mac and Dave. Uh, he uh, was working on a mod video for Skyrim, which I was thinking about it. I don't know if we ever released it. I that. think we did. We didn't, didn't we? I don't know. I don't know, maybe. Um, but he was working on a mod video for it, and he sort of, he comes across, like, he, he explained the differences very, very well in terms of, like, the fact that you're getting this kind of foliage and this, uh, the water effects are better. And he had it set up in a very particular way because he put the time in. You realize he's going to yell at me now for not knowing if we released that or not. <laughs> learn how to do it. Um, but but Dave is a is a guy that is willing to put the time in to learn how to get the perfect mixture of those. So I like that it's something that we we had an option to do. Um, but for someone like me that really doesn't put in the time to do that kind of stuff and really isn't that uh, you know isn't that impressed, I suppose, by that sort of thing. Like I I. It just wasn't a big deal. And it, again, it was only a big deal in, in the manner of fact that they allowed it to happen, but they limited it. They limited the fun ones, which is kind of that's, what put me off. That's it. what gets me. Is right. like, so when I think of mods, I think of things Crazy that do shit. stupid shit. Yeah. Like the, the... Thomas the Tank Engine. Well, I was going to yeah. say the Macho Man Randy Savage in Fallout 4 canon. The like, John Cena canon. Yeah, yeah like yeah, those kind of things. Like, But they can't do that because copyright, and I get why they can't do that, which mm. kind of sucks. Um, but at the same time, it's just like... That having a mod to make a game look better is cool, but that should be in the game. Yeah, just like, make your game better get, to begin even with. Even if they give us sliders yeah. or whatever, like, what right now with PS4 Pro, and you brought this up the other day, and I said you're full of shit because you didn't realize this was in here. Was but I for full Monster, of shit? But Monster Hunter okay. gives you options yeah. of do you want better graphical fidelity? Do you want a, a better remember, frame rate? Frame rate and or there's a third resolution. One. Yeah. And like, it was, res- it was resolution, frame rate, or graphics. graphics, yeah. Yeah, which 
resolution and graphics, I feel like the same. I'm guessing pop in potentially. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. Resolution is just literally but like gives, 4K. But that's, but that's an example of giving you options. Yeah. So Sliders. I wish I wish more and more games would do that, mm. and you can determine what's good for you and what's not for you that way. But for mods, like if I'm going to mod a game or if I'm going to put a mod into a game, I want to have something that does again something stupid that the game's not meant to do mm. to a certain extent. Um, there was one in GTA where you can fly the Millennium Falcon. Mm. Like how cool is that? And it, but you notice a lot of these ones are licensed IPs. That's the, well, that's, that's where the issue comes. That's in. the whole like joy of mods as well. Yes, <coughs> but that's me. the problem with being in a closed system. Is there's a lot of a lot of legal things. Things that go on behind yeah. the scenes that so you I think be aware of. I think they had a small impact, um, just from the fact that they were allowing people to do it. But I think that because it's not the Wild West like it is on a PC, you it, can't just download it from any website. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't have anywhere near the impact that people thought they were. And then have. because I think people thought they were getting the crazy mods. I have to pull this up because the Bethesda Creation Club hmm. that was supposed to be a thing for mods. Yeah. It is right now. I think our most li- disliked video, and I'm gonna pull it up to you know, most disliked. Name. Yes. <laughs> should, we, uh, should we just delete it? Like, <laughs> no. Why do people like, hate that video? Because because of what the content is, people don't yeah. like the creation club. Well, that's not our fault. We just uploaded it. I know. They're not saying they hate us. So they, but they thumbed down it. They thumbed down the video. Well, there you go. It's like. That's... Oh, never mind. It's only five. Five dislikes, but I think the comments. That's quite a lot. Was it the comments that were? I don't know. We didn't. We normally get like one at most. Something somewhere. Was like, fuck this, and I was just like, oh, people are angry about because I didn't realize how angry people were. Yeah, with I it. do recall there being quite a lot of banter about it at some point, but yeah. but maybe it was in a group as an I don't know, but somewhere there was there was a bunch of people shitting on Creation Club, like why is this a thing? And I'm like, I don't know, because it because yeah. it is. <clears throat> um, but but yeah, yeah, I think um, I think overall. No, they didn't have the impact that they were supposed to. But I think that is largely just because of the fact that they couldn't go to the extreme lengths that the PC modding community can. Mm -hmm. I think they could still have an impact, I think, if more games had the option. But basically, at this point, uh, aside from City Skylines and Bethesda, I can't think of any other games that are even fucking around with putting mods in there. I mean, even GTA on console or on PC has shut that shit down. Hmm. They, uh... It's a great area right now. They shut it down. I think they were a little bit. They're a little bit lenient now. But uh, but GTA Five, their issue is because you're playing online with other people. Mm. Uh, you're you're tampering the experience for other people. But they also then shut down single player stuff, which is an issue because then you're tampering with somebody's enjoyment of that game by themselves. Yeah. Because I don't have an issue with single player mods. I have an issue with uh, multiplayer mods if they give you an advantage. I, yeah. Either that or for multiplayer, my yeah, my concern is that they can mess with you in different ways. Like you've heard my story about my two years of modern warfare that got erased in one match because of the hackers that were on there like mm. that type of stuff is is what i worry about yeah. when it comes to modding because you are essentially messing with the source code of the game and if you can mess with the source code of the game then yes sure you can fire randy savage cannons but also you can delete other people's progress and you can do really nasty mean things so um, it's like when you get that text message about the uh that shuts off people's phones yes yeah 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 but it's uh yeah i don't know it's uh it's nowhere near where it needs to be uh it's it's good that they tried and it's good that they started uh but they didn't really follow through with it to the point where it was um like that it was exciting Mm-hmm. Really, because it was an exciting announcement. I and mean, when it, when they came out and they said, "Hey, mods for consoles," everyone lost their goddamn mind because they were like, "Finally, we get mm-hmm. to have this fun." And, and then they announced how it was going to be curated and yeah, all that. And, like, and they're like, "You know, all the boring mods that just add like extra leaves. That's what you're getting." And we're just Which like, "Which people do care about that?" Yeah, and it's cool. Wanna, it's I don't cool. I don't want to take Yeah, I don't want to shit on it because like for a game like Skyrim, yeah, you can make it look really pretty, and definitely you already have like you bought the remastered version of Skyrim probably because you wanted a pretty version of Skyrim so if you can make it even prettier with mods that's great good for you but for like for the the reason why mods are successful to begin with is not necessarily just for making games prettier people will put those in there because they can but the reason why mods make games successful is because of the way they fuck with games and that's kind of the or make new game <clears throat> modes the hook to it yeah I mean make the building and fallout sure. started as a mod Look at Gary's look at, Gary's mod. Gary's mod. You look, know, at, look, prop at, hunt. look at PUBG. PUBG started as mod. Prop hunt is now an official game mode in Call of Duty, and that started in Gary's mm-hmm. mod. You know what I mean? Like, there's definitely. Um, it's hilarious, by the way, if you've if you've never played it. But I played um, G mod. 
it's uh yeah i i would say no they didn't make the impact they needed to but they still have the capability of doing it they just need to either figure out a way that they can get licensed stuff to pass through or um make mods that are more interesting than just like putting a lick nice of paint texture. on something because that like you said should just be there should like be if it's possible it should just be in there to begin with it should be a patch not yeah. a mod yep this has been Indie Please Add Details, episode 24. This was our weekly dip in the world of any news and indie developers where we discuss the news and discussion of topic. I screwed that up completely. <laughs> Let's try that again. I'm Assuming off today. one of those weeks today. I'm, I'm off. I'm, I, I realize I haven't had it's my It's the new yet. camera. It's the pressure. Well, yeah. You're so pretty that right now, the, the reading part. People are just looking at you. You don't even really need to read it. You could just, you know, just wait. This is Indie Please Add Details, episode 24, guys. <laughs> Our weekly dip in the world of indie games and native developers. We discuss the news and our excursions throughout the week. Topping it all off with topic discussion that you can join down in the comments below. We'd love to know what you think. Have mods on consoles been what you wanted? Do you want more? What game should have a mod? Or have mods? You should have more than one usually. Because mm. you have one. You're in trouble. Just the one. Yeah. You can listen to us on your favorite podcast service. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iTunes. Or you can see our lovely faces at love2gamers.com. Sorry, I dropped my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Continue discussion on air, but offline, uh, online, but off air. Other way around. I'm just all over the place. This has been one of those on days. Twitter. <laughs> Love to gamers STL. Discord link in the description. My name's Keegan. Hopefully, we'll be better tomorrow for uh, Cody Morpheus, and then Friday Level Two podcast. New camera, new excitement. I can't read today. I don't know what it is. It's all good. But thank you guys for hanging out, and thank you guys so much for watching. As always, welcome to the second level. Bye. -bye.